this body has to make its way through this world and through life successfully, without this much of suffering. It will go away, but now that process has to start. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you so much for taking our questions. I've been following you for like a month or so, and I'm, I'm familiar with Surrender, I guess, from like Ramana Maharshi, etc. And I'm, I'm trying to, you know, diligently ask questions and just be constantly surrendered. And I'm noticing that usually, I think 90 something percent of the time, thoughts are just happening. I'm not thinking them, like they're thinking me. So it seems like there's two things involved. There's, there's guidance from ego versus soul, and then you have to determine whether there's a yes or a no. And then from what I've seen on your videos, if it leads to suffering, that was the ego. And if it leads to joy, it was the soul. And so all day long, I was trying to surrender, surrender, surrender. I want to be full-time in surrender. And I get to a, a place where like, I'm feeling good and I'm not anxious or suffering or anything, but this world seems to require work and I don't want to work. I'm just like, everything leads to suffering no matter what you do. You know what I mean? Everything is just going to lead to suffering. And I just want to be surrendered all the time. I don't want to have to go to work. I need money, but like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm being clear, but if you could speak to that, please. Thank you. I don't know how long you've been actually following the Neo Advaitin paths of detachment and, you know, observation of the Self, or also detaching from the illusory nature of the world around you and yeah. things like it's that. Years, Maybe years. Like, Ramana Maharshi, though, not the Neo people, just basically him. Yeah, the thing is that, you know, Ramana Maharshi and the sadhanas that are practiced by people who come, let's say, to Tiruvannamalai or read books about what he said and so on, a lot of the times the surrender, if at all it's practiced, is surrendering into the pain or surrendering into the, the suffering and detaching from it, identifying with I am, that will lead you to where you are now. And now the step is to come out of it, because when Ramana Maharshi himself was in Tiruvannamalai and when he was speaking, he was largely speaking to people who were around him who came there and stayed there, and who were in a material surrender, they were physically there in surrender to the Guru. It's Guru Shishya Parampara and Guru Vada, these are ancient systems of transmission. And I think I don't have to tell you all that, you know that already, and probably everybody in today's satsang knows it. We're talking about a system where you're there in front of the Guru, you know, the Guru is showing you things, is guiding you, and you are in surrender, and the surrender is outward, the surrender is inward. This is not the same thing as practicing surrender in the sense it is understood. When one is reading from a book about what a Guru has said, who is not even in his body anymore. These are different processes, you know. Because when you have to listen to a Guru who is there in a body, who is breathing and, and shouting at you and kicking you, he didn't do that, but others have done it, slapping you around and things like that, that's when the wake-up call in the materiality happens, when it's from a book and it's by yourself. Where do you live, Michael? New York City. Exactly, in New York City, reading from a book and practicing after many years, will lead you to where you are now. And I'm not putting down the experience of those years, I'm saying that now the next step has to come, and that next step is to understand that, yes, those thoughts are not yours, but they are engendered in your system, they are created in your system, they're not, they're not all of them, in any case, flying around you and, and trying to enter. A lot of it is created in your system. This body is creating those things. 
So, to detach from the thoughts and not to identify with them is wonderful, but if you can do that, being present in this body, it's a matter of just realizing that the processes that you have undergone have removed you, they have removed you from your reality, from your materiality. And that is why there is this suffering that you have to do a job. You know, actually, technically, what you want, you just want to be somewhere and practice this surrender from morning to night and not have to earn money and not have to deal with that harsh world. And the reason why you have reached that point is because the sadhana you have done is a sadhana that takes you away from the world and not into your system, making you a tough, strong guy that's out there ready to punch someone in the nose if required. That is what this sadhana is. It is making you strong, powerful, centered, present, connected with the soul, and because of that, tuned into the other. When you're not tuned into the source, because you have detached from everything around, where you even don't feel the thoughts as connected with you at all, then how will you be tuned in to the other? How can you even feel the other person? And when you don't feel the other person, then you do and say and create things which alienate you from what is around and cause that suffering. It exacerbates that suffering. You know, a person like you has made that route till now, and now you have that chance to transform it, to change it around, you know, to turn it around, the compass. Whatever is happening to you, right now, you have to work, you have to earn the money, you have to bear all those strange people in, in New York, which, by the way, is a city I love very much, and your whole system is in a state of detachment. Now, you start becoming aware of your materiality. I am this Michael. This body has got a name, that name is Michael, the son of your mother. Where were you born, Michael? Uh, in Boston. Boston? Mm -hmm. All right. What is your mother's name? Anne. Okay, so I, Michael, son of Anne from Boston. This is what this this body is that, that is here, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this Michael has to become aware that it's a material thing. This body has to make its way through this world and through life successfully. Without this much of suffering, it will go away. But now that process has to start. And remember that if you're a serious seeker and you really want to get to that state of joyousness, then you have to also make your way to places that will bring that into you. For example, you're in this online satsang, this is a big thing, this is a good decision to do this, because it starts to bring you down into yourself. There is some sort of a sadness in you, or it's almost like bordering on a fear. No, don't worry, you are not alone. There are a lot of people here, and you will be fine. Stand straight now, be tough, and come back into yourself. By doing the Kriya, touch yourself, say, I'm Michael, this, this, this. And yes, those thoughts, they are my thoughts, they are also part of this whole system. They are one-sixth of my system. Yes, my materiality is one part of it. The emotions that are experienced, the conceptual, the thoughts is one part of it, of this system, Michael. The transformative part, that part of myself, I, Michael, that creates, that is able to create, that has the capacity for the occult, or for art, or for all those supra-conceptual abilities, that is one part of you. Then there's another part of you, which is the ability at unity with the other. Oneness with that tree there, or with that person there, you have experienced already. I can see that. And the pluriform state, the this, this chakra here, when it opens, when there is 
when you experience yourself as being a, a devta, being a, a god, you know those men in, in New York who stand on the corner of the streets and say, I have come down to bring the word of the Lord, I am the Lord Himself. They actually have that experience, you know? Just the people there in New York don't know it. In India, he would be treated as a, as a sant, saint, Bhagwan, one who has seen God, who is God, Bhagwan. So, those experiences are, it's all part of this system. And when you start to feel one with this system, then you will start to realize those thoughts are okay. They, they don't feel like mine, but they have something to do with this body and this me. There's no need to observe yourself, observing yourself, observing yourself, and going back seven different layers of observation. It just leads to one place and it's a mental institution, which you are not going to go to because you are now going to do this. And one doesn't have to think too much, oh, is it the ego asking the source, or is it the source asking the ego, or is just, just bend down, put a smile on that face, and feel this body as being real. It is real. It is real. And yes, it is also an illusion, but we don't need to look at it as an illusion, because we have to function with it as being real. Finally, it's also atoms, right? If you go in, and it's all space anyway, that we know by now. But we also have to keep sanity and behave normal. That is the spiritual success, to be normal, centered, in surrender, tuned into the love which is you, within, that you know already, you've experienced already, and reflect that to the other, love the other. If you love the other, you'll like your job. And if you really yearn, and there is a deep, deep need to be in the presence of a Guru or a teacher, you will find your way to the one that is meant for you. Because there are some seekers, they can't, they have to be at the feet of a Guru, or even feet, that's what we say in India, but sitting on top of the head is actually what they normally do. So, don't worry, it will, that situation will change itself, but you have to also make that effort. And who is making that effort? Doesn't matter. His name is Michael, he's Anne's son from Boston. That's what that who is. Any other question leads to the mental institution. You don't need to know who you are. Why do you need to know that? There's no need to know it. You know it already, you're Michael, son of Anne, from Boston. It's more than enough to know about yourself. I have been doing the surrender and I feel it in the heart chakra, like very much. I had a Kundalini awakening many years ago. So I feel, I feel the third eye very deeply, but I, I don't concentrate on that because I don't like the way it feels. So I, I'm, I'm, I am bending down. I'm, I'm bending down. I'm an entrepreneur and I've got a lot of success. And I've got a lot of failure. And it goes up and it goes down. It goes up and it goes down. And I'm just like, enough. Enough, enough, enough. I am so sick of this. Like, honest to God, I'm so sick of this. And so I was looking for guidance and that's how I found you online. You're offering guidance. And like, cause, cause Michael, I can't listen to him. But yes, he's, he's gotten amazing heights, but he's also messed up. Like, Yeah, deeply, but it's deeply. not another person. I didn't want to interrupt you, but I have Please, to. Yeah. Michael is not another person. You are this Michael. Understood. You are this Michael. You have to accept that. We are not talking about another person. Say, I am an entrepreneur, I have my ups, I have my downs, I've had successes, yeah. I've not, I'm tired of it, I don't want it. But it's not Michael, it's you. Understood. It's you. You I, have I, I, to identify, to, to consolidate, then right. life will be a bit more tolerable, is what I'm saying. It's not Michael, it's you. Um, like, I understand that that's me, and, and I'm, 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 humbled. I make mistakes. Often things are outside of my control completely. Like COVID, I lost the business. I lost two businesses because of COVID. But look, the success isn't my fault too. But like, I want like a higher guidance. Like, like it seems that you're offering deeply, deeply, deeply. This is what I want. Like more than anything. I, I, I just, I don't want to continue. I feel like I'm in a loop. See, Michael, someone like you, you know, who's really in that existential 
big question mark. I would say to someone like you, try to find a way to spend time near the Guru. Find a Guru that suits you. It doesn't matter that much who the Guru is, it's more important who you are in the connection with the Guru, you know what I mean? And try to find that space where you can experience that surrender in an external sense. It's not necessary for everyone, but for someone like you, it's important, I feel. Even if it is for a short time, do seva, you know? I'm sure you can find a way to organize yourself that for a month or two you can go somewhere and do that. You need to be in a material presence of a Guru. I'm not saying this to everyone in the satsang, not at all. But reading from books and sitting in New York and fighting the world, it's, it's not going to... It's not going to quiet you down. You need to be quiet down now. You cannot be an entrepreneur in the spiritual realm. <laughs> you can't. It's not in your hands. You can only surrender in that realm. You know what I mean. You can only surrender. And that surrender, that flow, quiets down everything. Because you start to believe in your core. That core experience is not yet there. There's a lot of suffering in this face. There is. Everyone's suffering. Each one has their suffering, but this is a sort of an existential suffering which is not put on, even. Would be nice if it were put on, that's better. There's a real thing going on here, so you better... Take a, take a, take a step, you know? You can read a thousand books about Ramana Maharshi and all the questions and answers, it's not going to take you anywhere. It'll take you right there, with a brick wall at the back, behind you. Which is very beautiful background, by the way. I like it. So, think about what I'm saying, try to understand that you have to bend. And someone like you, I mean, you'll have to bend. Mostly, I would say, to a living master. The toughest of all, it's the most difficult thing to do for a seeker, but for some, it is indispensable. Whatever resonates for you, try to flow with it. But it's a strict thing, I mean, you are really in a desperate state, and not desperate in the sense that you are dangerously desperate, but it's existential, spiritual existential crisis, long crisis. If you don't want this to continue, then that is the way to go for you. But it will be all right. Sometimes one has to pull oneself together. You can wear a hat with Ramana on your head, but it doesn't change anything. It's not going to enter into your brain. The experience is yours and yours alone. All those people who were in Tiruvannamalai and sitting with Ramana Maharshi, they had a living master to contend with. He was not that gentle soul that you see there in those sweet pictures, no. He also had to deal with some of them very tough. Time for you to have a living master, Michael. Do you mean I have to physically be there? I would suggest it. I mean, it's not always possible for a person, but yeah, I would suggest at least for a for a month or two or three, at least to, to come back into your body. Who's going to pull you back into your system? Uh -huh. You're floating in some spacey... Plus, you have a Kundalini awakening on top of that. Can, can it be you? If it resonates with you, you can come. Whenever there is a possibility to be in Seva, you'll have to cross many jungles and many snakes and alligators and tigers. You have to fight for it if it's important. 